To sand your floors, you'll need four basic tools, starting with the belt sander. This is it right here. I'm using a pretty powerful one compared to what you could rent. And we're gonna start with the 40 grit sandpaper. Moving on, we're gonna need a edger sander, which will get the borders of the room. I'm using a Super 7. And we'll start with an 80 grit and only stay at an 80 grit. This is an orbital six inch sander. You're gonna need it with a 60 grit and a light. I do not recommend using your phone. I use that floor lamp. And these are the three main tools and the fourth one will come in later. First thing you wanna do is get the 40 grit on the belt sander and go at an angle. I do not recommend going past 45 degrees, but I'm going at 20 to 15 degrees right here and this is optimal for the process that I'm showing you guys. When you're done with one side of the room, you turn around and you get the rest, but you don't have to go all the way to the back side of the room anymore because it's already clean. Some people have trouble taking off the grip paper off an edger. Here's an example of how to do it. You just slide it back through the hole, tighten it up, and I hold down the disc to give it an extra squeeze at the end. Now to properly sand with an edger, I'm trying to demonstrate right here how the motion goes. You wanna go forward and kind of give it a flick at the end. As you can see, I'm giving it kind of a turn and you go slowly and you make sure to get that flick in and you go past the line so when you go over with your final grit on the belt sander it'll get covered depending on how bad and greasy the floors are you might need to change the paper maybe four times in a room but that could vary. Right here in this room, I had to only change it twice. Next step is to putty the floors. As you can see here, I'm getting all the cracks and divots. Moving back on to the belt sander, I put a 80 grit and now I'm going straight lines. I am not doing any type of angle. The 80 grit will cover the 40 grit that you did at an angle. And on this grit, I do recommend you go a little slower just so you could be sure that you won't have any diagonal lines from the 40 grit. Right here, I'm just demonstrating how close I get to the wall. On either pass, you could get this close on the 40 grit, 80 grit, depending on what you're using. But I get real close, but I don't bump the wall. If you bump, you might get a wave happening and you don't want that. And if you start seeing that straight line, that shows that you're doing it right. Some people find it very difficult to use the belt sander because of how complicated it could be, but it's fairly simple once you get the hang of it. Right here, I'm showing how little movement I actually have to do with my wrist to pick up the drum when I reach the wall and when I'm backing up or pushing it forward. You give a little tap and you could hear the machine stop sanding and then you gently release it back onto the floor you never want to drop the drum onto the floor because then it'll create a divot and next thing you know it's going to show up when you put the stain or whatever you're putting onto your floor once you've done your final pass on the belt sander next you want to do is grab your orbital sander and get what is left over from the drum sander. You want to get out the line and all the scratches from the edger that are previously there. As you could see here, it's not that difficult and using the light, 
it's very quick and easy depending on what you finish on edger that is why i recommended using an 80. right here i'm trying to show you guys what you're actually trying to get out with the orbital sander first of all you need to remove that line because it will show up if you do not remove it and second are all the scratch marks from the edger as you can see here where we already passed over the orbital sander it's nice and clean there's no line there's no scratch marks almost done here but the next step is to get all the corners i'm using a scraper right here you get all that gunk out get all the old poly all the old paint and you want to finish off getting a 60 grit and hand scraping it right after Now the fourth tool that you'll need or machine is the buffer. It comes with this pad. Usually it's red, but mine is all white from a previous job. And you're gonna need a 100 grit screen for the first buff. Now right here, I'm showing you how I put it on. It's fairly simple, but just so you guys could see how it works. You want to make sure you line everything up and put the buffer right on the screen as close as you can and we'll get to the buffing part i've seen a lot of videos where people show that the buffer handles are very high up above the hip this is very uncomfortable to work with i recommend lowering it all the way down to your thigh level and as you can see right here it rests on your leg and it's a lot easier to buff. Now moving at a constant, slow, medium pace speed, you want to get the floor fully covered with this. You do not want to miss any spots except the corners because this is a round buffer and it cannot get in there. And that is all right and it is not an issue. You don't have to go in later and hand buff it. But you just want to make sure you're overlapping your previous line by halfway or at least one fourth and really get the borders of the room with this thing. For this particular project, I'll be showing how to apply Bona Nordic Seal and a top coat of Bona Traffic HD with hardener. You always want to mix all of the water base polys up real well. The roller that I'll be using is by Loba. It's a microfiber and I do recommend using microfiber rollers with water base there will be no bubbling you don't have to worry about any of that but you do need to buy a special stick apparently for this starting off the application is getting the air vents that are in the room and i'm just showing you how i do it i make sure to get in there and all the cracks make sure it's got nice coverage and no leaks
When you're working with water-based finishes or sealers, you want to move quick, especially if they have a tint like this Nordic seal. As you can see here, I'm trying to move quick as I can, but I first need to get the corners. If this puddle sits right here for too long, it's game over. You got maybe a minute or two before it seeps into the floor and leaves a mark. When it's time to apply a big area, I pour a decent sized puddle out onto the floor. Some people like to do lines. This is just my preference and I spread it out nice and evenly, make sure there's no blotchiness and even coverage. And with the Nordic Seal, it's very easy to tell when there's an area that has a little too much on, on it. If the room isn't too big, I highly recommend you go wall to wall. It might look silly when you're walking, but it really helps with no breaking lines or you won't get any dry spots or no imperfections as you could see in the next clip i had a nice even coverage it's kind of hard to tell because it is a clear coat but no blotchiness and when this dries up it's going to look perfect And this should dry up within two to three hours, sometimes a lot quicker, could even take 30 minutes, but I do recommend waiting at least two hours before applying your next coat. It is recommended on the can to wait three. For the next coat, the customer ordered Bona Traffic HD with hardener. And as you can see here, you just pour the second bottle into the main one, get everything out of there, Put on the filter and make sure to stir it up real well. That's the main key because if you don't stir it up well, it's going to end up looking bad and you just spent $160 to redo a section. Now, in my opinion, this is a lot easier to apply than the Bona Nordic Seal just because it doesn't have the white tint and it is super clear and it's just a lot easier to put on. And after you put on your second coat, you're gonna wanna buff with the 220 for your final coat. But I recommend waiting 24 hours to buff and then apply your sec uh, final coat. And I continue going from wall to wall. And this little area took me probably five minutes to do. So it applies fairly quick and dries two to three hours. And like I mentioned, you do want to wait at least 24 hours to buff for your final coat. Make sure to use a 220 or higher. 